Hi, and welcome to 2023 AP Teacher Week. My name is Claire Lorenz, and I work on the AP Instruction Team in the AP program. During the course of these sessions, we'll discuss AP's online platform called AP Classroom and all of the instructional resources available to support teaching and learning. In this last video, we'll look at some student data that you will have after you've given certain assessments in your classroom. And we'll see how looking at that student data can help inform next steps in terms of instruction in your classroom. So here's a quick look at the agenda for what we'll cover in this video. First, we'll do a quick resource overview. We'll look at the all assignments report, the progress check report, and the content and skills performance report, which is new for this academic year. Then we'll take a quick tour of AP Classroom. We'll show you where to find all of these reports. And we'll look at some data to see how you might analyze it and determine next steps for your students. And then we'll come back and look at some key takeaways for this session. So first, a resource overview. If you've joined us for other sessions, you know we always talk about our AP resources in terms of supporting teaching and learning for the entire instructional cycle. And you know that for each stage, we have some sort of AP instructional resource to support it. In this particular video, we are going to focus on AP Classroom reports, which will help you get and give feedback to your students. So what reports are in AP Classroom? On the left-hand navigation panel in AP Classroom, which we'll look at when we enter AP Classroom and do a live tour, you will see three different available reports. All of these reports will help you get insight on the assignments that you give your students. There are three sections, all assignments, progress checks, and the content and skills performance reports. Each report is designed to give teachers helpful feedback regarding students' performance and progress toward learning course content and skills. Each one is different in different ways and will show you slightly different data. The more you use AP Classroom and its instructional resources, including ensuring that student data is reported, the more useful these reports will be. In other words, the more you ensure that student results are actually imported into AP Classroom, even if that means typing in student results. If you give in an assignment on paper, the more useful these reports will be. And we hope that the addition of the content and skills performance report this year will give you a good reason to maybe think about doing that. So let's look at the all assignments report. The all assignments report shows results for every assignment teachers have created or assigned throughout the year. The report can be viewed by class section, so you can see that right here, or it can be viewed by an individual student within that section, and you can see that right here. You can see class averages on assignments by percentage, you can see that right here, and by points earned, and that is right underneath the class average percentage right here. You can also click on a link to go directly to a more in-depth view of an assignment's results, and you can see that from the results over review here. The report can also be exported into a CSV file. You can do that by clicking here in case it's helpful for you to have this data in a spreadsheet. The next report is the progress checks report. The progress checks report will give you the results for every progress check for every unit of the course. There are separate tabs for the multiple choice and the free response sections of the progress checks. The report can be reviewed by class section or by individual students within that section. You can also look at performance across class sections. So in other words, if you collapse all of this, you can actually see all of your sections at the same time. We'll look at that in AP Classroom. And that way you can see longitudinal progress across the course for all of your sections together, for just one section, and for students within a section, and for individual students. You can see class averages earned on assignments by points earned. That's it. So this student earned 21 points out of 48. 
They can also click on a cell to go directly to a more in-depth view of a progress checks result. So you can actually click on this cell and see more information. And again, we'll go into that in AP Classroom. Remember, everything in AP Classroom is clickable, even if it doesn't look clickable. So when in doubt, just click. And this report can also be exported into a CSV file. And finally, the content and skills performance report. If you have taught AP before this in a previous school year, this report is brand new for the 2023-24 school year. And this report is going to give you some powerful data that we hope you can use to really dig into how your students are doing progress-wise in your class. So this report shows a running performance snapshot by different course components. So you'll see course component here, like topics, skills, and units to help teachers identify where students may need additional support. So you'll be able to actually pick a different course component here. The report can be viewed by class section or by an individual student within that section. You can look at data for an entire school year, or you can change the date range and just look at data for that particular range. You can also drill down to see the data that contributes to student and class performance on a certain component, including the number of questions assessed. You can actually hover here and see which questions and the specific assignments included. You'll be able to hit this button here and expand and you'll see a whole other menu come up with the assignments that contribute to the reporting for this particular metric. We'll look at this more in AP Classroom. And finally, it should be noted that students have their own versions of the progress check and content and skills performance reports. So they can see their own individual data and assessment results. This is an example of what the progress check report would look like for an individual student who had taken progress checks through unit four of a course. Students can use these reports to track their own progress starting from day one in the course. And it's pretty easy to read and it's color coded to help students get feedback. Remember we talked about getting and giving feedback so students can see where they need to focus most, especially when it comes time to review for an AP exam. So they will get individual results on a section of a progress check, but they can also see kind of like their longitudinal results as they keep going over time. And again, if you would like to see more about any of the resources we've talked about in this AP Teacher Week series, we encourage you to visit our main AP Central page by scanning this QR code and a more detailed overview of our instructional resources by scanning this QR code. So as always, we'll start by going to myap.collegeboard Org. We'll click educator and we'll sign in with a username and password. We're going to bounce around in classes for different courses today. I'm going to start with AP statistics. So if you've been following along with us for the entirety of AP Teacher Week, we've talked all about the resources that are available, AP Daily, Topic Questions, Progress Checks, the Question Bank. And so at this point, perhaps you've assigned some of those things to your students. You have some data for them. You're looking at the data for those assignments, and you're trying to figure out what to make of student performance. Let's say I'm a statistics teacher, but let's say I've taught up through the first half of the course or so, maybe through topic 1415. I'll have to see where the data is. I'm at the point where I kind of want to do a pulse check of where students are at based on all of the assignments that I've given them so far. So I'm going to go, first of all, I should probably say that if you're over in resources and assignments and you go to assigned resources, you can actually see the results of all of your students. I can see for my period one class here that I've assigned three different AP daily videos. I've assigned different practice assignments all the way through 1.5. And I have student results for all of these things. And I can kind of look at all of this. I can click on a bar 
I can see which of my students fall in the top 25%, which fall in the bottom 25%, which fall in the middle to 25% categories, how many questions were on this particular practice assignment, what each student scored, the total number in each one of those categories. And I can actually click here and view more about the results, or I can click here and I can actually see the assignment. I'm not going to do that from here. We'll do that from a different part later on in this video. But you have a lot of ways to navigate here. You can also click on a student's name and see the student's individual results as well. Remember, everything is clickable. Oh, just about everything is clickable. So when in doubt, click. But maybe you want to see this in a different way. So one of the things that you may do is you may go over to reports and you may click on all assignments. I'm going to go to my period one class. I am am able to see here all of the assignments that I have given to my students so far. And you can see here, I have um, all of my topic question quizzes that I've given, and I have um, the average on all of those things. So here I can see all of the topic assignments that I have given my students. You can see I've given a practice assignment for topic 1.2, 1 for 1.3, two for 1.4, and then one for 1.5. And these have been really quick kind of like either in-class practice assignments or kind of exit ticket kind of things, because I can see this one was only out of three points. So three questions, three questions, four questions, two questions, three questions, not big practice assignments. And I can see across here the students averages. So I can see 50%, 70%, 40%, 45%, 57%. .50%. I can see a lot here. Maybe I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, I have quite a few students in the yellow. I don't have a ton of students in dark green. My class averages are not great. Maybe I can use the question bank to find other questions that are in topics one, two through one, five, so that I can give that to my students and see if they can get a little bit more practice in. Maybe I come to the question bank and I look at all questions. And I want to point out here, I already know what the results are going to be, but sometimes the question bank doesn't always have all of the things that you want. So kind of keep that in mind. This is not an unending supply of questions, unfortunately. I wish it were. But this one for AP Stats has over 1,200 questions. I'm looking within a very small set of topics at the very beginning of the course. And so I don't expect to find that many that I haven't already used. Let's see what I have here. I want to include one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five. These radial buttons will help me confine this list to just the topics that I want. If I leave it where it is, it's going to give me questions that are tagged or aligned to any one of these topics, but also maybe aligned to other topics. That's why you frequently will get FRQs that are tagged to multiple topics in this type of search. If you put include no later than, you'll get the same results if you put this last one, which we'll talk about in a second. This is kind of helpful when you are later on in the course. So let's say I wanted to give like a unit three review and I click unit three and I decided I didn't mind if I got questions that were also in unit two or unit one because I'm doing some sort of spiral review. I could click unit three and say include no later than and the question bank will give me questions that are tagged to anything in unit three. But if it's also tagged to unit three and something in unit two or unit one, it would give me that as well. So if I had an FRQ that was tagged to topic three, two, two, six and one eight, it would give me that FRQ. That's what this does. But I'm just going to put include only because I want only these topics. 
this is what's going to happen when I click include only. I got 17 questions that match my selected filter, and you can see that all right here. What you can see is that I have already assigned most of them because I have used all of the topic questions that are here. I've been using the topic questions. Now, to clean this up a little bit, I want to show you a couple of things. Let's use the question bank to its fullest. I want to get rid of a list already assigned. I want questions I haven't assigned. So I'm going to say, show me the blanks. Maybe I want to know a little bit more about these questions here. I'm going to add the stimulus type column. We talked about that in the question bank session. So I have two questions here. It's not a lot, but at least two questions that I can give my students that I haven't given them before that give me a little bit more understanding, give them a little bit more practice about whether or not they've made any improvements on one, two, and one, four, especially if I've gone back and reviewed anything. So this is how I would make thoughtful use of the question bank and in the early part of the school year. I wish there were more questions, but this is kind of where we are, like, especially with topics at the beginning of the course. Let's fast forward. I'm going to go over to AP Chemistry. Let's say you've taught all of unit one. You've given topic question quizzes or assignments. You've maybe assigned some AP Daily videos. And let's say you've assigned the progress check and you want to see how your students are doing. You can do the same thing that we did before, but I want to kind of introduce this new content and skills performance report. This content and skills performance report can give us a lot of robust data. So I'm going to try to go through this step by step. It will give you a snapshot of students' performance on content and skills for particular course components. If I have given my students in let's say my period one class, all assignments through unit one. And I wanna see in general across everything, what is their performance for unit one for the entire school year, right? I can click apply. It will tell me on average, my students have earned 49% of all of the points for the questions that I have given. So out of the 41 questions that I have given them in unit one, they have earned 49% of them on average as a class. Now there's 20 students in my class and there's 41 questions. You may say, well, what are the 41 questions? You can actually click here. You can see the questions that are contributing to this performance metric you can see the average class performance on each one of those questions. So just because the class average for the whole unit is at 49% doesn't mean that we don't have some cases where students are actually performing well on particular questions. And again, you can hover here and you can look at particular questions. So let's say you wanted to drill down a little bit more. You can actually come up here and go to course component. I want to know a little bit more about topic now. And I can click apply. And now I have data by topic. I can see that even though the class average for unit one was 49% performance rate, I now can see that they're performing better with some topics than others. So not too shabby with topic 1.7, really not so great with topic 1.1 and 1.2. That kind of tells me that if I were going to go back and double down on any content in topic 1.1 and 1.2, or go back and give students opportunities to practice anything, and I had limited amount of time, this is where I would probably put my focus. Again, you can hover or click here and you can see the individual questions that contributed to this. You can also, again, click on your student list and you can see how your students have performed on each of those questions for that particular topic. So this will give you the breakdown of this 40%, right? So which students are in which categories. If you want to see which 
assignments actually contributed to this 40% here, you can come up to this plus sign and you can click that. I'm going to tell you what it does first before I click it. It's going to kind of push all of this over. It's going to give you kind of like a grade book of the assignments, similar to how you would see it in all assignments, just simpler. So you still have the topic, you still have the number of students, you still have the number of questions, you still have the percent average. Depending on the resolution of your screen, you may see more here. You, like, you may still see the name of the topic. You may see a little bit more than what's appearing on screen. But you can see all of the assignments that contribute to this. Now, I'm not expecting much here because I know I gave the unit one progress check that contributed to topic 1.1. And I know I gave a topic 1.1 practice that contributed to topic 1.1. And that's it. But as I go through the year and I maybe do a spiraled review or I give some sort of unit test or a midterm or I review in March or something like this, I can see what actually contributes to this 1.1. And if you're saying, well, how do I know if my students actually improved, what you could do is you can say, okay, well, how was my student's performance on topic 1.1 for the first half of the year? And then you can say for the second half of the year, for those of you on block schedule, you can say for the first half of the term, the second half of the term. So you can set the date range so that you can see how students are improving, especially if you're kind of reteaching something at some point. So this can kind of help you see how you might go about about choosing other questions to help your students practice. Like if I have limited amount of time, here's where I would focus my energy. Pay attention to the number of questions that are contributing to this. If this were one question and it said 90 something percent, I shouldn't make the assumption that students like are whizzes at topic 1.6. Likewise, if it's two questions and students are at 30 percent, I shouldn't make the assumption that they know nothing about topic 1.6. So consider the denominator here. These two topics, four questions, it's probably enough to make a judgment call, but not a vast amount here really. So keep that in mind as well. Also, you can sort this by or filter it so that it only gives you information by a certain topic. So if I wanted to get the progress check out of there, I could actually just look how it is for my quizzes. I can see how that is. I've given quizzes all the way through. You can see some of those quizzes only had one question. And here, here's where I have that situation where it's now it looks like topic 1.5 is pretty good, but it's only one question. So I can look at it like that, or I can look at the one progress check. It seems like students did worse on the progress check than they did on the topic questions throughout the time I was teaching the topic. So that's something to look at as well. Lots of things that you can do here. And finally, let's look at the third report. I'm going to switch over to Calculus AB. I'm going to go over to the progress check report. So let's say you're halfway through the course and you've given some topic questions and all of that, but let's say you've actually given the progress check for unit one, unit two, unit three, unit four, and you want to look at some longitudinal progress. You can actually go to the progress check report, and you can see some longitudinal progress here. You can see I have a period one class. I've been delinquent in assigning them progress checks, so I have no data to compare there, similar with this particular class. But I can compare my period two class against my period three class. Doesn't seem like a vast difference, but I may be asking myself why there's a difference between these two sections. Most teachers could probably give you an answer for that relatively quickly, but I'm really ecstatic to see my period two all in the green. That's great. I can click here and I can actually see performance on individual parts. Calculus unit one actually has multiple parts. Let's look at one that doesn't. Here we go. Unit four, progress check, multiple choice. You can click and you can click again and you can see your students just as you did before. And you can do that kind of thing. You can also expand here and you can look at all of this 
and see about how individual students are doing. You can also actually pick a student from a list and say, okay, well, how is this particular student doing comparative to the whole class? You can also show this to students during some sort of student conferencing or parent-teacher conferences. We do this so that you can actually not have to show everybody's progress to one particular student. And you can really home in on how a particular student is, is doing, especially if you're going to have a conversation with that one student. This can kind of help you figure out ebbs and flows for your students. So I would know for period three, we had a little bit of a lull here, but then a pick up in unit four, I would have to kind of go back. What's the content here and then see I happen to know there's a relation in these two units. My students may need a little bit more practice here, and maybe that's practice that I can spiral into some reviews as I go on. I do want to point out that if you click on a unit like this, you can also sort by ascending to descending. If you want, you can again, click here, click in a progress check. We have in the past given you the performance of students on topic skill pairing. So in a progress check, there are three questions typically for every topic skill pairing in the course and exam description. If topic 3.1 was paired with skill 1C, then we gave you three questions with that pairing. And in this particular case, I get an actual average. For those of you who have taught AP in the past, we've actually pushed this average out to a decimal place. So you get a little bit more concrete information here that's not just rounded. You can actually click here and look at performance on individual questions. You could click here to see student results. You can click here to see the actual question. You can sort this by lowest performance. So let's say I wanted to see more about this. Actually, calculus teachers are probably not surprised to see this here, but what else can I do here? Well, that content and skills performance report that I showed you earlier, we actually did it by assignment as well. So I'm not really interested in the unit at the moment. I'm really kind of interested in how they're doing by topic. And so I can see now the breakdown of each topic and how they're performing there. I could also do this by skill. I could do it by whether or not the question was calculator active. Some teachers have been asking us for this information about skill for a while. So you can look at it this way as well. Interesting to see that all of the skills are in the yellow. And you can always go like you have in the past to the questions itself, sort by the ones students got most incorrect. You can look at student results in a grid pattern. So you can kind of get a quick glance of how students performed here. You can go back, click on a bar here, see which students got the question correct and incorrect. You can actually click on the question. Once you're looking at the question details, we can see quite a bit about the question itself. Really quickly, you can see that the question is related to question seven and nine. That tells me that those three questions are tagged to the same topic. If I wanted to know which topic, I can actually expand the question scoring and details panel, and it'll tell me which topic that is. If I wanted to have my students watch a video based on their performance on this question, I can go directly to those videos here. If I decide that students really missed the boat here on the content of the topic, I can click here and it will take me to the question bank pre-filtered for topic 3.3. And so show me all the questions that are tagged to topic 3.3. If I decide that skill 3G is the problem and if I want to know what that is, I can just click on it. So confirming solutions are accurate and appropriate. I can click on this and it will take me to the question bank pre-filtered for skill 3G. What I really like about this is that you can get the same thing about with rationales, rationales for the correct answer, also rationales for the incorrect answer, but it will also show you how many students picked which distractor. What I like about this is that this seems to be a question where I can fix student misunderstandings really quickly because no student picked this distractor, only one student picked this distractor, 
and everyone else picked this one, which means something is causing my students to pick D as an answer. Maybe I figure out what that is. I might read the rationale and see if that helps me determine what they may have been thinking. I can maybe band-aid that really quickly in my class so that students aren't making that mistake again in the future. Sometimes students are all over the board and it's hard to tell where the misconceptions might be. But in a case like this, it might be a place where you can make an easy fix with students so that they're not making this mistake again in the future. That's a lot of what you can do with the reporting in AP Classroom. It requires you to have data, so we hope that you'll spend some time and make sure that you do have data within AP Classroom, but there's a lot here that can inform your instruction and give feedback to students so that they can really focus where they need the most support. So what are our key takeaways for this session? Well, we're hoping that you interpret the results in a way that can help you provide guidance to students. You can use the reports with students, but we should note here that the report section of AP Classroom are not meant to predict students' scores on the end of course AP exam. That's really important. We want students to know that. It really depends how often and how much you're using AP Classroom. And, you know, AP exam is really what happens on one day for most courses. So, you know, just because the students are in the green the whole entire course doesn't necessarily mean they're going to get a qualifying score on the exam. What it does tell you is whether or not a student shows understanding of course content and skills at a particular point during the school year. The results are meant to be useful to you as teachers to help you target instruction and then also help students identify where they may have misunderstandings and may need to focus more in their studying. We are hopeful that using all of AP Classroom resources, students will have the opportunity to build on their learning throughout the school year. And we know that there are so many AP champions out there. So many of you are cheerleaders for your students. We know that regardless of student school on assignments throughout the course, you always encourage your students to keep going. And knowing that these supports exist, hopefully that will also give them the confidence to go further to improve their knowledge and skills. Again, if you'd like to point your students to a place where they can get guidance on all kinds of AP topics, please have them visit our student blog at that URL below. So the resources we shared with you today are meant to help support your day-to-day -day instruction, but we frequently hear from AP teachers that students ask them a lot of questions about how to plan for what comes next after high school. So we wanted to share one more resource to help you answer some of these questions, and that resource is Big Future. Big Future is a free online resource that helps students take the right first step after high school. Whether your students are interested in a four-year university, community college, or career training, Big Future can help them start planning. Visit bigfuture.org slash educators right here, or scan this QR code to access resources that will make it easier for you to share information or support planning activities in your classroom. That's something you would like to do. When you connect students to Big Future and they complete college and career planning steps, they are automatically entered for monthly drawings of $540,000 scholarships. So we hope this is helpful for you and your students as they get ready for what comes next. And with that, we wanted to say thank you for joining us for this session. Thank you for joining us for all of Teacher Week. And we wish you a very successful 2023-24 school year. Thank you for all that you do to support AP students. Bye-bye.